There are video games with weapons that are of an insane size. We really want to talk about those weapons right now. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 of the biggest video game weapons of all time. Just to clarify, we are talking about size here, folks. So yes, some of this stuff is gonna be iconic, but we are not saying like most popular or most famous weapons. We are saying biggest, and we mean it. The most ridiculously sized, huge, impossible to wield weapons that we see in video games. Starting out with number 10, an obvious one, the BFG 9000 from the Doom series. You cannot do a list of big weapons without mentioning the BFG, so we're getting it out of the way. It is the ultimate weapon in every Doom game and a few Quake games. This thing just takes up a ton of real estate on the screen and fires these massive plasma projectiles that destroy everything in their path. No matter what Doom game you're playing, from OG Doom all the way to Doom Eternal, you know that when you pick this thing up, you're gonna be dealing some pain to the armies of hell. How on earth the Doom guys lugging this enormous machine around? I don't know. Probably nobody knows. Who cares? The thing looks awesome. And even though the design of the gun itself changes, the bigness doesn't really ever get lost. Like, seriously, just whatever Doom game you're playing, it's a huge gun. For most people, what this gun actually does is kind of a mystery. You can tell it shoots a big projectile forward, which explodes and causes a bunch of little explosions or something along those lines. But what's actually going on when the gun fires in the originals is weirdly complicated. It shoots out 40 invisible tracers in a cone shape around the direction it was originally fired, which does a certain random amount of damage and Actually, you know what? It's too much. There's not enough time in the world to try to decipher this crap. Of course, there's an even bigger BFG, right? The stationary cannon from Doom Eternal, the BFG 10,000, which is strong enough to blow chunks out of entire planets. The BFG 9000 powers the thing, though, and it's the 9000 that's the real star of the show in the Doom series. At number 9 is Cloud's Buster Sword in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Let's get another obvious one out of the way. You know what we're talking about here. Cloud's Sword is big. It was over the top back in 1997 when the original came out, and it only looks bigger and more ridiculous with the more realistic graphics from the remake. To give you an idea of how big this thing actually is, the scale model used to promote the game measures the sword at about 185 centimeters, which is over 6 feet tall taller than Cloud himself. Like, keep that in mind. Cloud swings around a sword that is bigger than him. Because of the more realistic world that the remake takes place in, sometimes his giant sword actually gives him trouble, and it definitely looks like he's struggling to swing up more in the remake than in the originals. Of course, there is a bigger sword. The Mesa Moon Sephiroth sword is absolutely insane. In the remake, the sword doesn't look that big, but check this thing out in the original. It's like one and a half Sephiroths tall. Like, where does he even put it? It's a lot easier to get away with these types of oversized weapons in games where you never actually show how they get around with them. It just disappears when you leave the battle screen, and that's a big help. And number eight is the Spartan Laser from Halo 3. In comparison to something like the BFG, the Spartan Laser isn't actually that ridiculous, but it's still an absolutely enormous weapon that takes up a ton of space on the screen when you try to hold it. It's basically a portable space laser, like a hammer of dawn that you carry around. Only Spartans are capable of picking this thing up, let alone actually firing it. Unlike the BFG, this thing is not indiscriminate. It requires skill to use rather than just being a fire and forget type of deal. Every time it fires, it requires a few seconds to charge, so hitting fast moving targets can be pretty tough, but basically anything that gets hit by this thing will die. It was originally introduced in Halo 3, but has pretty much shown up in every game in the series after that. It's a cool and iconic weapon, and its downsides make it a bit more balanced for multiplayer than certain other ridiculously huge weapons on here. As far as big guns go, this one is both really iconic and actually relatively recent. So even though it's not the biggest gun out there, it's definitely very big and really satisfying to use. At number 7 is the Nightmare Soul Edge from the Soul Calibur series. For fighting games, no other weapon out there comes close to Nightmare Sword, also known as the Soul Edge in Soul Calibur. 
I mean, we've seen it in pretty much every game in the series. It is both memorable and very, very big. Because the sword is so huge, in fact, it gives Nightmare a unique fighting style. He is slow and wields the sword like a club most of the time. But when he really gets a flow going, he can start chaining together combos that hit surprisingly fast. That's what makes it unique. It's not just a big club. It's a sword that can be used with some finesse. Just so happens to be that big. Huge. As big as he is. Because of his somewhat unusual fighting style, Nightmare isn't always considered top tier in every game he appears in, although at least with the most recent entry, Soul Calibur 6, he's pretty near the top in most people's rankings. The Soul Edge is just a cool looking weapon on top of being enormously big, and sure, every character technically has a weapon called the Soul Edge, but when people think of that term, this thing, this is the weapon they're thinking of. Giant sword, blinking eye, that's it. It's big, it's cool as hell, and it gets a mention on this list for all those reasons. At number six is the Smelter Hammer from Dark Souls 2. Just look at it. The Dark Souls series is obviously no stranger to huge weapons. It's got multiple categories of equipment classified as Ultra and Giant, so obviously there's going to be some big stuff floating around. But so far, no other weapon in the series has been quite as big and beefy as this thing. The Smelter Hammer from the Crown of the Old Iron King DLC from Dark Souls 2. The Iron Warriors that populate that area drop this thing sometimes, and for most players it's a totally useless piece of inventory junk, simply because of its insane strength requirement. You gotta put 70 friggin' points into strength if you actually want to wield this thing. Effectively, anyways, that is easily the highest strength requirement of any weapon in the entire Souls series, and it is by far the most difficult thing to wield. And that's because, just to use it, I mean look at it. It is so big and takes up so much screen space that it becomes legitimately hard to even see what's going on when you've got it equipped. This weapon is actually kind of infamous among Souls players because mainly of how ridiculous it is. It is referred to as the chicken drumstick for obvious reasons, and one Reddit user named Citron Cactus apparently calculated that it actually weighs around 5 metric tons, so I mean the strength requirement kind of makes sense. It would take some upper body strength to swing that thing around. At number 5 is Marika from Saints Row 4. There's plenty of silly and over the top weapons in the Saint Row series, but the Marika, it's something else. Uh, it's not just one gun, it's at least 8 guns strapped together. At minimum, it's got a machine gun, a minigun, a flamethrower, a rocket launcher, an auto shotgun, a heavy pistol, and a giant knife. And just looking at the thing, this it seems like there's gotta be more crap hidden in there. This thing is crazy powerful. It's so chaotic too. Every time you reload, it switches between the flamethrower and the rocket launcher, so it can kill some of the toughest enemies in the game in just a few seconds. But with that amount of power, there's also a few drawbacks, to say the least. Obviously, it chews through ammo like crazy, and trying to aim at something can be a challenge with how much the gun sways when you shoot it. Probably the hardest part about using this thing is actually trying to see what you're doing. Like the muzzle flash, the fire that comes out of the gun can easily block half the screen or more. But when it comes to big guns, nothing else on this list is more American than this monstrosity. It is crazy, and it's actually even kind of useless, but it is also hilarious. And number four is Xor from Super Mario RPG. Okay, yes, just a little bit of a cheat, but I mean, come on, this guy is literally a gigantic sword. He's bigger than Bowser's castle, so there's no denying that this dude is not big. And yeah, you could argue he is not a weapon per se. Like, you don't actually get to swing him around in the game or anything, but he is a sword that is... I mean, at least definitionally a weapon. And by our standards, the standards of the people making this video, it's a weapon, okay? This guy is maybe the most iconic image from Super Mario RPG. Just a giant sword sticking out of Bowser's castle. It appears, falls into the castle, and you're not able to get back to actually fight it until the end of the game. It's basically the big end goal, even if it's not actually the final boss. All we're saying here is that if it is bigger than a castle and it is a sword, it absolutely qualifies for this list and that's why we're talking about it. At number 3 is the K9000 Cyberdog Gun from Fallout New Vegas. This weapon, which was introduced in the Old World Blues expansion, isn't just big, it's bizarre. It is a living dog's brain attached to a gun. Like, just look at this thing. There's the brain right there. It's got ears that move. It's even got a nose so the dog can sniff things out. And that stuff isn't just for show. It detects enemies. 
even ones that are outside the normal perception range. So basically it can find bad guys better than you can. It barks when you take it out and it whines when you put it away. It even growls as you shoot it. Even the gun part of it is actually pretty unusual. You would think a huge object like this would be inaccurate, but it's actually fairly precise. It even has a scope. Otherwise, there's not actually a lot to talk about. It just takes up a ton of space and it's weird as hell. Normally you put something like the fat man on a list like this, but I mean that thing is mostly empty space. It's just a catapult to launch nukes from and size wise those things have nothing on the K9000. At number two is Speedbuster's Buster Launcher from No More Heroes, which is by the way, just a weird as hell game. Remember the boss that was a superhero that shoots you with crotch lasers or the one where you don't actually even fight like some other guy kills him for you? For a game that is all about boss fights, they do throw some pretty serious curveballs. And the Speedbuster is definitely one of the stranger battles in the game. Basically, they're an old lady with an absolutely enormous gun. This thing is huge. It, like it puts the rail gun on Metal Gear to sham. It's more like something you'd mount on a ship rather than lug around in a shopping cart. And the unique nature of the battle means that you're not really fighting in a traditional way. Instead, the entire fight is about getting close enough to disable the gun. Every few seconds, the Speedbuster will fire what is called the Buster Launcher, which creates a massive beam that is totally unavoidable if you're in its path, and the only way to get closer is to hide down in one of these little side alleys and wait for your opportunity to keep moving. Once you're close enough, she's basically defenseless, but getting close is the battle. When it comes to guns, this is maybe the biggest we've seen used by a single character, and it's weird as well as extremely goofy, but undeniably huge. And at number one is the Wailing Dark from Asura's Wrath. If you've never seen this thing, you're probably wondering to yourself, how could a sword be big enough to be number one on this list? After stuff like the Buster Launcher, which is as big as a city block, or Xor that is as big as a castle, there's no way some sword is just going to come along and beat that. Here's the thing, there are over-the-top games like No More Heroes, and then there are games that are like Asura's Wrath. This game is just on another plane of existence compared to everything else out there. It is that crazy, and this sword, inexplicably, is one of the craziest things in it. Why? Simple. According to this article that originally appeared on Joystick, the Wailing Dark is 380,000 kilometers long. That is 236,000 miles long. Or the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Seriously, it is that long. And this isn't just a fan estimating its length or anything. This is actually from the developers themselves, specifically Hiroshi Matsuyama, the CEO of CyberConnect2, the guys who made Asura's Wrath. Now, bear in mind the sword isn't always that long, but during a climactic moment in the fight with August, Asura is impaled by the weapon, and it also goes through the entire planet. The fact that it's a normal sword outside of its crazy length makes this even crazier. I mean, it is a sword that can literally impale the entire planet, held by a single guy, one dude. That's a sword that is going to be hard to top in something like that. So as it stands, nothing is topping it. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.